A. Well, the Mets have moved out west for the final time this season. From the Bay of Baltimore to the Rockies in Colorado. Trying to negotiate the Rapids in the final quarter of the season en route to what they hope will be a postseason. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Denver. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets open a three-game series against the Colorado Rockies. The Mets have a quarter of a season to go. Their next 13 games will all be against last-place teams, Colorado, Philadelphia, and Boston. It's go time for this team. Well, there's the old saying, and I know I've said it before, but these, these uh, cliches are, are true. You have to beat up on the second division teams, particularly the last place teams, if you're going to win your division, in this case, or the National League flag. Uh, they got a nice schedule going for them right now. Uh, they can they can beat up on these guys. They're coming off a four game sweep of Colorado uh, in New York. So you want to keep the pedal to the metal. Well, what the Mets have to deal with in this series and the rarefied air of Denver, at least for tonight, they're shorthanded at the bullpen because Logan Verrett's going to take the start for Matt Harvey on Sunday. They'll probably bring in another reliever tomorrow. But right now, the bullpen's a big concern. Well, the bullpen is not deep. It's been exposed ever since that Pittsburgh series at home where they got swept by the Pirates in the extra inning games. The deep end of the bullpen is very, very powerful, uh, but the middle has been iffy. So uh, with Verrett now starting on the getaway day here on Sunday, Terry's shorthanded in that bullpen. They've got to make a move and bring someone up to strengthen that bullpen and the three games here where you never know. You might have three games where there could be 50, 60 runs scored. Well, Bartolo Colon will try to prevent that tonight. Now, Bart over his last seven starts has been good and then bad. He was good his last start, so he tries to break that trend tonight. Well, he's 1-4 and four since the All-Star break, and as Gary said, it's been a good, a bad, a good, and a bad. Uh, his last start was a strong one against the Pirates. It went seven strong innings, gave up one run. A uh, lifetime against Colorado. He's 2-1 and one in three starts, all here in this ballpark, but his ERA, ERA is almost eight. On the other side for Colorado, the Mets get their second look at John Gray, the rookie right-hander, looked terrific against the Mets ten days ago. Well, number one uh, draft pick in 2013 his fourth career start all-american out of oklahoma threw a really fine ball game in new york six innings pitched only one hit left-handers for the mets went 0 for 14 in that start he's 0 and 0 in his first three starts he's on a 75 pitch count which is ridiculous and they've taken him out early but he really impressed us in new york mets were able to take advantage of the rockies bullpen in that series to sweep four games they'll try and keep their run going against the rockies here tonight, a four-game lead to start play tonight. It's the Mets and the Rockies from Denver. All the action coming your way tonight on SNY.
today. By Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. By Bob's Discount Furniture, quality, choice, and untouchable value every day. By StubHub, the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of the New York Mets. And by Delta Dugout, sign up today at Mets.com slash Delta Dugout. Follow the Mets wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment. With in-game highlights, look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stack cast, and more, get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. You're looking for home runs in the month of August. Well, both these teams have a hat to throw in the ring. Carlos Gonzalez with seven, Curtis Granderson with six, up among the National League leaders for home runs through the first almost three weeks of August. Mets are out west for the final time. Trying to catch a big one here in Denver. Mets and Rockies first pitch coming up. Murphy moves over to third. Cespedes in center and Conforto in left. This could be Michael Conforto's last day in the big leagues for a while. And he gets the start there against John Gray, who makes his fourth big league start tonight for the Rockies. Well, as I said, Gray, his fourth start. This will be his third start here at Coors Field. His only road start was against the Mets, where he was very impressive. Good fastball, good slider, comes after hitters. But then again, you see the innings pitch per start, only five. It's not his fault. He's on a 75 pitch pitch count, which I think, and Gary also, and Ron, the triumvirate up here thinks that's ridiculous. And we'll look at the Coors Light Rocky defense. We got some gold glovers hanging around. Gonzalez Cargo over there with three, but he won them in left field. He's in right field this season. Blackman can go get him in center. You've got Nolan Arenado with two in his first two seasons at in the big leagues. And LeMahieu won his first gold glove 
at second base last season, Nick Hundley, the veteran behind the plate. You know, when you talk about Gray's pitch counts, you can understand they're trying to limit his innings, much as the Mets are trying to limit some of their starters. But why would you do it this way rather than letting him have a full start and then just stopping him at some point? I mean, they're not in a race. They don't need him in late September. I, Gary, I don't have an answer for that. I just, it, to me, it just goes against my, the, my, the grain. And, uh, you know, you don't want your pitchers, number one. To be looking over their shoulder to have a bullet down the bullpen and I can see okay you want to do depending on his pitch count six or seven innings but when you got 75 pitches and you're out in the fifth inning it's, it's just absurd well in uh, 24 total appearances this year in the majors and the minors Gray has gone more than six innings only three times so they're certainly not teaching him to go deep into games and for this Rockies team that has such a dreadful bullpen that would seem to be something you would want to nurture in your starting pitchers. Anyway, the Mets who swept four from the Rockies in New York last week, much because of the Rockies' poor bullpen, will try and get off to a fast start against Gray tonight. The Mets got first inning home runs in each of their first two games in Baltimore from Granderson Tuesday night and from Murphy on Wednesday night. And Granderson leads off tonight against Gray, whose first pitch of the night on the way is taken for a strike, and we're underway. Curtis had a three for nine in Baltimore, as Gary said, with the two home runs in the first game. Granderson in 17 August games has driven in 16 runs. He has been a run producer at the top of the batting order for the Mets. 52 runs batted in this year, almost exclusively hitting leadoff. Murphy and Cespedes to follow, and Granderson lifts one to left. Should be playable for Brandon Barnes. And that's the first out of the night. Very big dimensions here, and particularly in left field more so than right. 390 out there in the gaps, almost 350 down the left field line. 450, 415 in center. 375 in right field, it's right center by the bullpen, folks. That is a bandbox. That is a short poke. It is not the home run producing stadium that it used to be, but it is a run producing stadium because of all that expanse in the outfield. Here's Daniel Murphy who takes up and away for ball one. Murph the last 15 games hitting 338. That covers the month of August. Three home runs also in August, nine for the year, including one his first time up on Wednesday night. And he pulls off the changeup, and it's one and one. Well, Murph's been hitting the ball really solidly, been using all the fields. Got a, a two a two double game here, recall. Right with two bullets down the left field line. I believe the first night in Baltimore. Another change up, and he rolls over this one. Pulse of the first baseman takes it himself, and there are two out. So great picking up right where he left off against the Mets in New York, and now he'll face you into Cespedes with two out and nobody on. Cespedes has cooled down just three hits in his last 19 at bats. Have you seen any pattern about the way they're pitching him? He's been out in front. Now, the left-handers, he hasn't hit well all season, even in Detroit here. Uh, and that's because he's been out in front. He gets out in front too much in the lefties. I like him to use right center field more. They've been pitching him a little bit upstairs and a lot of bad breaking balls he's been chasing. Been rolling over, hitting the ball, pulling the ball on the ground. Rocky's put on the full shift against him. Goes after the slider and misses. Nothing in one. It's like anything else. You look at the defense right there. The shift, the unusual shift. But, but as I said, Cespedes, Cespedes has been pulling the ball, and particularly on the ground, and rolling it over. Rockies got some great pitching last night from left-hander Johan Flande, and they beat the Nationals here three to two to take the finale of that series. The Nats have gone home, lost two hours in the. Exchange after a night game here last night, and they're playing Milwaukee, and they trail 3-1 in the fifth. Cespedes drives one toward the gap in right center. Gonzalez over. He won't get it. Cespedes to second with a two-out double. Well, that might be a good sign right there, Garrett. Of Cespedes coming around using right center field. Keeping that shoulder in. Very strong. Cargo almost got there. Cargo made a great catch last night on a diving play toward the right field line. That time couldn't quite get there in the gap. So Cespedes has his 34th double of the year. 
And the Mets have a runner at second with two out for Lucas Duda. His third game back since sitting out for nearly a week with a back issue. Two for eight in the two games since his return. And he hits one slowly toward the big hole, and it's through for a base hit. Suspend is around third. He'll score the first run of the game. Lucas Duda bouncing one where there was nobody playing, and the Mets have a one nothing lead. Well, it's a line drive in the paper tomorrow. This might have even been a cue ball off the cue. Might have cued this, Gare. I mean, is Duda going to bunt? Why would you play the third baseman there in that full shift? Well, I think only because there's a runner at second and you want to take away the stolen base. And I think that's the only reason Arenado wasn't playing where that ball was hit. And it's, uh, you did cue it, too. That was a sidewinder.